Okay, so this is the final section of my Lightroom quick tour. Um, we've done the library sorting images, we've used the develop module to make adjustments to the levels on those images. Um, so here we've cleaned up the background, we've kind of washed out the image at some level, um, and we've darkened the blacks. It's been a little bit funny with me at the moment. Just see. Okay, I don't know what's going on. It's not quite reacting. Um, so the next phase is to select all the images. So here I've got five final images shortlisted, ready for export. You should be able to um, go to select all under the edit menu. And then we're going to use export. Now, as I said before, you could output with a print or web module, but I tend to export directly uh, from the file menu. So I'm going to hit export. That brings up your options for export. So I'm going to export to the hard drive. You can choose other devices, etc. Um, I'm going to export to a specific folder and I'm going to choose that folder now. So I'm actually going to create a new folder on my desktop and I'll just call this exports. I tend to keep my exports separate from my originals, not put them back into the same directory. Uh, so I'm just going to be exporting to my uh, new folder on the desktop here. You can add it to this catalog so it will effectively re-import the, the JPEGs, whatever it is you're outputting. I don't want to do that in this case. It may be a scenario in which you do. Um, and if the, it has existing files there, so if you were saving back into the same folder, you can ask it, get it to ask you what to do or just tell it to overwrite, etc. So be careful with this extremely powerful um, can be a negative thing as well. Um, you can rename if you need. If you remember right at the beginning, I renamed my files anyway, so there's no need. But this might be a phase in which you think, you know what, I want to rename um, because I'm not got 24. I'm only got five here. Maybe I want them uh, to be custom name and then sequence. So it'll be uh, my tech shots uh, one to five, basically. Okay. Um, you can start your number sequence here. I'm going to go to uh, edit this. I don't want the hyphen, as I've said before, so I'm just going to take that out. I'll put an underscore in my custom text. Just like we did before, I might use two or three sequence um, module. And then each of these, it adds in. You can delete whatever you don't want. So in this case, I've got my custom text. And then I've got my sequence and that so you can create your own profiles like this and you can save them so it's something you use a lot you can just save it's a really powerful thing about Lightroom. so it's going to export tech underscore shots underscore zero zero one through five in this case uh, if you've got video in there you can include video and again choose video things i don't uh, you now get to choose your image format most often you'll probably be using jpeg remember that jpeg is compressed if I was working on something that was a real high quality job um, commercially or something, I would probably either create a DNG file, which is Adobe's version of RAW, or a TIFF, which is an uncompressed format copy as well. Normally we'll be using JPEG to share stuff with people. You could put them out to Photoshop if you knew you were going to do further work. Uh, but TIFF is an option for what's often used for archival quality. So in other words, um, an uncompressed uh, file format which won't lose any quality. If you've got something that has a lot of dark areas in it and you add compression and then you start making further edits, you're going to cause a bit of problem. You can also choose your bit depth. So 16 bit is higher quality but much larger file size than 8 bit. But that's what I'd normally use for an archive, those settings there. In this case, I'm going to stick with JPEG. You can also choose your color uh, profile. Now, I will warn you that there's a lot of difference of opinion over what color profiles are better. Uh, but usually speaking, um, some of these formats are not fully spotted, like Pro Photo should be the standard one for professional photography. However, quite a lot of devices don't fully support it. The RGB Adobe one is normally a slightly smaller gamut. So normally I would stick with sRGB. And then you've got your quality settings. In this case, I'm going to put them to about 80. 
which is quite generous, but um, obviously if you're doing stuff with photography and you're spending a bit of time on them, you want to make sure you keep your quality. If I was repurposing these for the web, rather than doing that here, using the image sizing option, I would actually do that probably in Photoshop now instead. Okay, so you can resize your image if you want it to fit a certain resolution or a certain number of pixels or uh, if you're working on a pro job, 240 pixels per inch is a good sort of quality for professional print level. Um, again, occasionally you might go higher than this. Most devices don't work unless you're dealing with professional printing. Don't really go above 200 in terms of anything you can determine. Um, Occasionally, now I've worked with a few printers who've asked for things at 600 dpi because they have a, a very expensive digital press. Um, so if you're told to do something, then you could change it here. Uh, again, you can sharpen for screen, for matte paper, for glossy paper. These are presets for things like printing to photo paper, matte or glossy. They have slightly different settings. I don't usually like to add sharpening. I tend to do it in Lightroom. And if I were to make a suggestion, I'd normally say error on the side of caution. For your holiday snaps, high contrast sharp might look good. Um, but again, I prefer to have visual control of this. Uh, finally, you can put in um, metadata, you can include it all. You can also um, remove personal info and other things like that. Again, I'm just going to leave these all on the presets. You can add a watermark if you want, like a copyright. If you were going to be handing these out to a client you didn't want them to reuse or you wanted to put it on the web. Uh, for example, for an image library, you can also embed watermarks. Okay, um, now these are visible watermarks, um, but you can use a third party tool in Photoshop to imply digital watermarks, which are hidden. They're not visible, but they will prevent images from being copied or imported to things like Photoshop. They effectively put a lock in them. And post-processing is what you want it to do afterwards. In other words, you want it to import, you want to open them then in Photoshop, uh, open another application, etc. So I'm going to click Show in Finder, and I'm just going to say Export. Okay. Again, because this is um, Adobe Lightroom, you could create a preset. So you can see there's presets here. But for example, if I knew I was going to use these settings quite often, I could click Add and add my own user presets. So the power of this package is that you can save a lot of time long term. Just hit export. I've only picked five files to make it a little bit swifter. It looks like my machine is going a bit slow. Um, but effectively, depending on the speed of your machine, and if you're outputting 10,000 images with masses of conversions and stuff, it'll take a while. And that's basically done. So there are my shots renamed, uh, rebadged. I uh, can quickly preview them uh, on the Mac here and just see, check that it's output them. The quality looks good enough. Um, and I'm ready now to take these, in this case, into Photoshop to put on uh, screen content, pin the screen, etc. Sometimes, what I would do if I were doing that job is I would go back in now to this image and increase the brightness so that I could actually see the edge of the bezel and export a second version just to help me position the content, bring both of those into Photoshop in different layers, turn on the, the uh, lighter version temporarily so I can pin my screen and then delete that layer. Um, it just depends what you're doing with your images post product. But basically that's a Lightroom overview. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. Um, give us a share if you've got any suggestions or questions.